This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Previously on TV Tuners, um, the Disney Dome appears to be expanding at an uncontrollable rate. My right arm is much stronger than my left arm for some mysterious reason. I've got a bowl of fruit and I'm not afraid to use it. I'm hungry! I can throw my hat like a frisbee. Watch. Oh no! Wow. My hat! Can you believe it? The president's here, and he gave me a medal. And now TV Tuners continues. television podcast for the true fanatics. It's a weekly dive in the latest in TV news and reviews. I'm your host, Swanson, and with me as always is my co-host and a teenager who may have committed a murder, Stairmaster. Hey! I don't feel so good. In the head! Oh. Yeah, you're, uh... You, you clearly need some mental help, but we're not gonna give it to you. <laughs> well, my friends will take care of it themselves. Yeah, we don't need to worry about your clear mental disorder. It's the era of self-care. <laughs> and Twitter mutuals. <laughs> That's true, I guess. And with us, as always, is our other co-host and uh, mom who just wants to find out who murdered her child, Kioran. Listen, I'm not, I'll never make excuses for the horrible things he did, but he's my son. <laughs> He may have murdered, wow. he may have raped, he may have raped murdered, but he was my little boy. He's my son! My boy! <laughs> my little boy! <laughs> my boy! You, you broke your boy? <laughs> they broke my boy! <laughs> they broke my little boy! My boy! My little boy! My boy! My little boy! My boy. I think th- Kyo is really going all out for a podcasting oh, Emmy. <laughs> he's getting a Tony for this for sure. A potty. I think that oh, that might no, actually be no, a real no, thing. No. <laughs> oh, give me that hot potty. Please Ooh, stop. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a hot potty. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, you guys watch anything interesting this week? Uh, I've been playing Kotor too. Does that count? Is that a is that a TV show? It's uh Western RPG, so it might as well be a TV show. <laughs> you know, I figured you'd be watching more television in your bid to become president, or sorry, uh, yeah, president of the of TV land. Oh, I forgot I it was about mayor. that completely. Shit. It is mayor. No wonder I keep getting yeah, of TV land. letters in the mail. Yeah. yeah, I've been brushing up on my TV classics for my mayor pedigree, of course. Oh, yeah, what have you been watching, Keo? No, I just wrapped up the first season of Friends. What? Yeah, of course. This is uh, definitely true, and there's no way for you to confirm that. How'd you feel about that thing that happened at the end? <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh, I've uh, been watching uh, Saint Fane and uh, Chairs. You know. Oh yes, two classic shows that you just mispronounce like normal. <laughs> that's, what... no, that's just that's just staring, mispronouncing stuff like always. <laughs> yeah, I've already com- I've already completed Seinfeld and Cheers. Oh. All 11 seasons and 9 seasons, sorry, 9 seasons and 11 seasons, respectively? 18 yes, of course. Total. What mayor of TV land wouldn't have completed those already? Hmm? Oh, good, good point, I guess. Yep, and I'm going to finish watching every season of The Simpsons, including all the bad ones, too. Oh, no! Oh, man, being, you know, it's not all great being a mayor. <laughs> well, it's a, it's an important duty. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it is. Mm. Anyway, uh... A great burden that I bear on my shoulders. The crown weighs heavy. The mayor crown. 
the one I'm going to be do, wearing. They do give Matt's you a stare. crown when you win the election. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, why wasn't Stroll wearing the crown, though? Uh, he said it was too heavy. Yeah, his, <laughs> well, his, his weak neck could probably not support it. How pathetic. I crane my neck upwards for more strength when I'm watching TV. Mm. Uh, very smart. Yeah, I don't know, Stairmaster. It looks like Kioran's really preparing, and you're sort of over there playing... What was it? <laughs> Skotor 2. Alright, well, how yeah, is Yeah, a video oh, game. It's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of dated. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of that has not aged well. The writing stuff. Unlike the timeless classics of Seinfeld and Chairs. Yes. I wish Kotor 2 had, like, a Norm character. I guess the closest they have is HK-47, the assassin droid. How, how great would um, it be if there was a video game <laughs> where there was a character who just walked into the game and all the characters were like, Hey, that guy! <laughs> wait, wait, Swanson, you're not going to ask him to clarify that comparison? <laughs> uh, just gonna let that yeah. one slip on right, right by? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Tell me, tell me how the assassin droid is like Norm. Well, everyone loves him. Uh-huh. <laughs> And that's it. Okay, who else would in the party would be the norm then, huh? Well, I don't know. I haven't played KOTOR 2. Yeah. Because you're not cultured well, like mean, me. Well, in pathetic video game <laughs> culture. Hey, you play video games on a TV. Oh. Yeah, but it's not a TV show. Mm. It's like commandeering the actual purpose of a TV <laughs> for something inferior. Would you say it's hijacking? Yeah, it's hijacking. <laughs> or do you say that video games are television terrorism? You know, I actually would. That's, oh, ooh. I'm going to add that to my platform. <laughs> oh, fuck, Uh-oh. not again. Yep, uh, prison camp for gamers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know, he's not wrong. Mm, is he not wrong? <laughs> if yeah, you're pro-concentration camp, let us know. At TV Tuners on Twitter. Use the hashtag Red Pill. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's head into the news, huh? Mm. Speaking yes. of Red Pills. You guys like music? That sometimes mm. happens on a television. Yes. I, I don't really care for music unless it's on the television. Well, luckily for you, music just recently was on the television because the MTV Video Music <gasps> Awards happened. Wow! Oh, yeah. They have a channel dedicated to music, except mostly not. <laughs> it's almost exclusively not music, except for this one time of year where they act like they know music. Uh, it... Yeah, as expected, it's just sort of a collection of popular artists. Well, the what's day. the news? Was there a controversy? No, it just happened and people won stuff. Oh. What do you mean? Cool news story. So there was no live execution during the broadcast. There was no assassination attempts. Uh, no, none of that stuff. Taylor Swift won. Wow. Oh. Who? Whom? You know Taylor Swift. Uh, drawing a blank here. Uh, is that a real name? Um, yes. I mean, I don't know if that's actually a real name. But oh, then it's close not enough. Yes. <laughs> I would say I'm that's just no. Pa- the just... opposite of yes. I'm kind of wondering if you if you guys are not sure if I really don't know who that is or not. <laughs> yeah, I assumed you knew who it was and you were playing a gag. But there was a part of, there was a part of me in the back of my head that was like maybe he doesn't actually know. <laughs> okay, so what's the new story here, friend? People won stuff. Oh. Like best new artist oh, oh, presented oh. by Taco Bell. Oh, what who won? What? Billy Eilish. Billy Idol. Billy Eilish. Sorry, I call her Billy Eilish. Um. Billy of Numa yeah. Leash? She best she won Best New Artist presented by Taco Bell. You know, she does that song where she's the bad guy. Duh. Wait, excuse, excuse me. Taco Bell is deciding who makes the best music now? No, no, they're just presenting it. I mean they got But that decide- is the full name of the award. <laughs> I mean they got to decide who got what movie people went to see in nineteen ninety nine, remember? With the Phantom Menace cups and whatnot. It's true. They are they are really doing some serious overreach. <laughs> they also had such uh, categories as best K-pop and best Latin. <laughs> best Latin. What? So they like have some Roman monks? <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just a bunch of people chanting. <laughs> 
One Winged Angel that starts like playing. Some good music. Uh, of course, Song of Summer, presented by Samsung, <laughs> was like, won by Ariana Grande. More like Samsung. Well, that's got to be a fake name, right? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is fake. Uh, okay. Unless she really loves Starbucks. <laughs> Who would name their family Grand? <laughs> That's very egotistical, Imo. It's very anime, if I'm being honest. Mm. And some Song of Summer, of course, not to be confused with Song of the Year, because, of course, summer is just a season. <laughs> Song of the Year instead went to Little Nas X and his uh, very popular Old Town Road song. Oh, I didn't hear it. Can uh, you describe it to us? Yeah, uh, he's going to take his horse down to the Old Town Road. <laughs> He's got that the horses. Very compelling. Wait, He's got the horses in the back. <laughs> what, what? Sidecar is attached. Wait, 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 wait. So he's got like a horse carriage, but there's horses. What? Hmm? Well, he, you can ride them after you take them out. Okay, so he's got multiple. He's horses. taking them to the old town road, so you need a carriage. But he's got so a yeah, sidecar. He's... It sounds like a motorcycle. Look, either way, this is, is a... Is he doing uh, this by himself? Is he alone? Well, Billy Ray is Cyrus he... is there, so... That's oh, fine. it's good to have friends to help you out along the way. Right, so there's there's two men with their horses. They're going to the Old Town Road together on their horses. T- two horses or three horses? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's three in the video, which I have seen. Uh, <laughs> look, I'm, I'm surprised you guys haven't heard this. It was number one for uh, record-breaking 17 straight weeks. Nope. When? I thought you were th- talking Just about... Just recently, until literally two weeks ago. I thought you were talking about Country Road. Well, I thought this was an old-timey song from, like, forever ago. Yeah, I thought it was a whole lot 64 This is a song. rap song that has country elements in it. Oh, that's fun. So, let me get this straight. They're going to an old country road, but it's 2019? <laughs> well, yeah, there's still old country roads, Kia, right? No, there's not. There's only new ones because we're in 2019. Yeah, why? The would roads we... don't get updated. Swanson, we've got the cyber highways now. <laughs> Swanson, not you're... everyone has the cyber highways. What about Alabama? Yeah, not everyone's jacked oh. in, Keo. Oh man, I'm kind of in a bubble, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah, you're over there in LA with your cyber highways. <laughs> Meanwhile, people in Alabama probably have regular roads still. That are probably dirt roads. Yeah, huh? probably at this point. Yeah, it's really I sad. I wasn't trying to drag people from Alabama. I don't know. Fuck off. We, we listenership gotta, is there. I met we a, gotta send them some microchips or something. The right? only thing I know about Alabama is the guy I met from Alabama once who told me I should sit with my legs spread open to attract women. I don't. I think that does the That's opposite. Uh, <laughs> sounds like some major wisdom. <laughs> did you, like, was did he you notice take him up the, on that word? No, on that offer? No, I... Like, why did he say that to you? Did he, like, notice your bulge or something? <laughs> Maybe. This was in the Navy, by the way. So that might he have was, been... He, he was like, his uh, his legs are far too close. <laughs> Spread those out. It's the only way women will notice it you. It all accentuates your thighs. Did he caress your thighs he said this? A little bit. I played oh, chess yeah. with him once. I don't know, this sounds a little homoerotic. <laughs> Yeah, this sounds like... You know what this guy sounds like? He sounds like he was a Houston Roughneck. <laughs> Thank you for Which I'm in back. full support of. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, the the music awards happened and people won stuff and it was a good time by everybody. Thankfully, the, uh, that, sh- that Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper song didn't win anything, so... Yeah, I won Best Classical. What? Oh, for what? What's it, One Winged uh, my... Angel? <laughs> yes. Classical song, One Winged Angel, by me. Uh, yeah, that classic song from 1997. Yep. What a hit. Still winning awards today. It's a real... Anyway, it's... It slaps. It's time to move on from what's on TVs to the TVs themselves. What? <gasps> uh, as you both may know being your on a TV podcast and also running for a mayor of TV oh. land. The place, not the network. Uh, motion smoothing is a huge problem for modern televisions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a big, big uh, problem. Anyone on the with a boomer t- parent or like in high school with an inept, technologically inept teacher is probably per- falling victim to this. 
Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell I you how many. Hmm? Definitely seen that before. The image blurring on the TV show. Yeah. Looks yeah, bad, you know, right? W- yeah. It makes when you. you when you go to your grandparents and they're watching an episode of NCIS, but everything looks like it's on Basically, stage. It's artificially in 60 frames per second. And that makes yeah. you a little dizzy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Well, yeah. a new group a new group has come together mm-hmm. to an change elite squad? this. The Justice League? An, el- an elite squad, yes. Triple X? Uh, they call themselves the UHD Alliance. <laughs> That's not a joke. Um, <laughs> I thought that was a joke, Swanson. <laughs> no, it's an industry group that represents major electronic companies as well as Hollywood studios. They are creating something called filmmaker mode. What? What? So, so you can make a TV show on your TV? No, your- no, no. Nothing that simple. They asked a group of 400 filmmakers, including people like Christopher Nolan and Martin Scorsese, <laughs> oh, God. J.J. Abrams. For some reason, the Duffer Brothers from Stranger Things are on this. Uh, for their input, deal. for their input on how to make movies and TV shows look better, mm. less colors. Isn't that their job to make the TVs look good? The shows. Look I good. guess, but they were like, "Why don't you tell us how to make this not look like garbage?" Uh, and the result is this new TV setting, filmmaker mode. What, does Which it... is, a... hmm? never mind. <laughs> it's aimed to give viewers a consistent cinematic representation of images as the filmmakers intended, in terms of color, contrast, aspect ratio, and frame rates. Mm. Yeah, so less colors, <laughs> but... or more colors, depending on how the filmmaker wanted it. Wait, sixteen bit, sixteen bit. So wait, like. It responds like there's like metadata in the film that or just your TV now. Is that the concept I'm hearing from you? Uh, That's what well, it sounds like the actual details aren't a hundred percent because the uh, guy who gave us the brief here wasn't us very. Personally. Yeah, he he came into the room and he said, "Listen, I got a brand oh, new geez. bold idea for you guys." Oh wait, there he is, right there. Uh, hello, fellas. I just want you to know that the uh, filmmaker mode implementation is uh, going very well. This is just, that's just Jeff Goldblum. Uh, I have to go. He's still here from last week. Skip skedaddle. Exit stage um, left. Oh, wow. I can't believe we survived that. I can't believe yeah. we survived that. It's really weird, too, because yeah. the door is on the right, but he jumped out the window on the left. <laughs> I think he was a little spooked that we, we spotted him. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. sort of like a raccoon at night. If you shine a light on him, who knows what will happen. Yeah, hmm. probably, he usually runs away. So how much is this going to cost me, Swanson? That's the bottom line here. Jeff Goldblum or the filmmaker mode? Well, it's <laughs> the only, filmmaker mode. Well, it's only going to be on new TVs, Kill Rain, so... It's so probably going to cost so you whatever new TVs cost. Well, as, mayor, as future mayor of TV town, Kill has to purchase every TV... That is made. Yeah. That, anyway, wait, the question. So are you of course, conceding to me? <laughs> oh no 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 no. <laughs> but I am just saying that if Keo didn't do that, he would certainly lose for sure. So that means you also are planning on doing that? <laughs> yes. Fuck. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I'm gonna follow Stairs' lead on this one. You know, he's gonna be the leader on this project. He's gonna buy the TVs first, and I'll I'll buy them after <laughs> him. You know. <laughs> wow. Typical Keo, always following in my shadow. Yeah. I, mean, in this, in I this feel like one you want to be the trendsetter yeah. here, Keo Ryan. In this one instance, I'm willing to let Stair take the credit for this idea that we need to purchase all the televisions so that we can properly review and understand them mm. as mayor. <laughs> oh, yeah. So go ahead. Oh, wait, nobody said anything about reviewing them. Disowning them. Oh, that's what we're going to do on the podcast now, after you buy all these TVs. Oh, man. TV Tuners is now a television review podcast instead of a television review podcast. <laughs> That's it's right. Somehow even more niche. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, when we do when... unboxing videos. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh my god! Now we can finally set up a Patreon. Yes, finally. The pe- what the fans have been clamoring for. We can make back like one percent of the money we spent <laughs> on the TVs. Perfect. 
one percent is also really generous or we could do a patreon now and have videos of us unboxing like dvd sets from amazon wow we dead have a one. video where where we have swanson in a box and we unbox him and he's like gasping for air also he's naked yes why do i wait why do i have to be naked to titillate and arouse <laughs> oh all right uh, anyway, when asked about what filmmaker mode would actually entail, uh, there, we weren't very forthcoming with details, such as whether or not it's tailored to each movie you're watching, or is oh. it a blanket setting. Odds are it's a blanket setting, but all we got from the mysterious man during his press briefing was, your Skynet is motion smoothing. <laughs> Luckily, our John Connor has arrived. Well, they're not wrong. So they are an elite squad. Yeah. Uh, he described it as a single button that lines up the settings so it works for the benefit of the movie and not against it. Mm. Again, also work. pretty vague. I would suggest it is kind of dynamic. I would hope. Yeah, it, it would be interest, it's interesting to see how you tailor-made things to, like, random shows that you're watching. <laughs> well, they'll just go to your default TV settings, I bet. Eh, Maybe. Anyway, uh, the future is now, and the future is filmmaker mode. Buy it today. I'm picturing you press, filmmaker, you press filmmaker mode when you're watching regular TV. It just puts black bars on the top of the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> um, that'd be great. It, t- it changes nothing else. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that's it for the news, so it's time to move to a segment near and dear to everybody's heart. It's Trailer Blazers. Hit the theme, Keo. What? What the hell? What is this? You got a soundboard? Yeah. Amazing. What do you mean? He as made mayor, that, he, he made that sound with his mouth. Yeah. As mayor, I picked up a lot of new skills. What? Can you do anything else? Yeah. Do another song. Oh, I don't have any other songs, but I can do this. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> That's technically a song. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah. What a good, what a, what a dope message. See what I did there? I don't get it. Yeah. Good job. All right. So we, uh, welcome to Trailer Blazers, where we watch the latest and greatest in trailers. This week, the Breaking Bad movie. Ooh. That's a spicy meatball. That's right. They uh, dropped a. I guess it's more of a teaser than yes, a trailer. This is not a but, trailer. Uh, Segment canceled. Anyway, we watched it and it happened. <laughs> and it's coming to you. Yeah, it looks October. like the cops are trying to get Jesse Pinkman, our boy. They're our trying to get our boy! A sweet, sweet meth boy. Yeah, I all... put him behind bars. Innocent boy. <laughs> All this really is is just uh, Skinny Pete showing up and sort of hyping what the general film is probably going to be about. I mean, do we really need to know that the police are going to be after Jesse? Do we need this trailer no. to know that? Uh, I don't think that's what the trailer's for. I think it's more to tell you when it's coming out and to get you hyped <laughs> for it, but sure. It made us, at least it made us understand what the movie was going to be about, because it wasn't 100% clear before. Okay, guys, yeah. so what do you think? Is Jesse Pinkman going to go to jail, or not? I would assume no. <laughs> that would be the, like, most depressing thing they could do. <laughs> Is he just Which goes to jail. Which means they might do it. I, yeah, I think they might do it. Is that Gail I don't know. directing this? Yes, right. he's writing, he, writ, he wrote and directed it, so wow. it's probably going to be dope. Um, that said, I, I don't know, there's always the, there's the ever-present rumor that this will somehow tie back around to the Flash forwards on Better Call Saul. <laughs> I feel like I'd be extremely disappointed if it did, but... Well, no, the greater... What reason does Jesse have to give a shit about Saul? <laughs> they gotta establish the cinematic universe, Swanson. You can't have a Saul movie without a G- introducing him in the Jesse movie first. You've heard of Avengers Endgame? Get ready for Breaking <laughs> Bad Final Time. <laughs> What if they do something like stupid, like he stops by at a Cinnabon oh, no. and, and, and sees Saul there and they look at each other for a second and then he leaves and that's the only well, the mention Cinnabon's of Saul in the whole mall, movie. So it would be a bit more involved than that. 
How? What if he's just what if he's just in like just around all of the scenes that we've seen Saul in in the flash forward? <laughs> so like he walks past him while he's working at the Cinnabon yeah. and like he he walks past when everyone's crowding around him because he had a heart attack. All those teens run by and the camera pans and he's looking over his shoulder like, huh? Yeah. Teens. Anyway, uh, over under on on uh, Brian Cranston coming in as some sort of like ghost. Uh, force, force ghost, some sort of force ghost. <laughs> Will he be I'm dark side say... or light side? He's dark side. <laughs> yeah, but well, that would mean light, he si- was... light side he is was Mike. Si- yeah, but dar- he was si- semi redeemed. If he's a dark no, side he's ghost, still that dark would be compelling Jesse to do evil. I don't think. Yeah, Walter he would, would be do like Jesse. Like a... It's time to cook. <laughs> I think... you need to kill the police, Jesse. <laughs> I don't. That's a terrible Walter impression, but. Well, what does Walter? We've got want? a lot of work to do, Jesse. <laughs> it's time to kill the police, Jesse. Wipe down this. And then Mike is the good cop, saying, "Jesse, don't kill the police. <laughs> Let's don't listen to Walter." Walter. He's a bad anyway, attack those uh, officers. <laughs> And they're going to just shoot you. Grab his gun! Grab his gun, Jesse! Mr. Pink. Go ahead, Swanson. We're waiting. I should not listen to either of my associates. (laughs) So he's just haunted by everyone who died? (laughs) Yes! Just everyone shows up. (laughs) Everyone's here! It's like Smash Brothers. Why is he... Why why is he haunted by Gus or Mike? We'll never know, but... (laughs) Anyway, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, it remains to be seen what exactly is going to happen in the movie, but we'll find out on October 11th, which mm. actually isn't that far away when you think what about it. What if it's just Jesse on vacation having a great time? <laughs> it's just weekend at Bernie's. Jesse finds a dead body and has to... Whoa! A dead body he has no relation to, but he has to make it look like that person's still alive. Yeah, to keep up appearances. <laughs> it's Saul's body. <laughs> <laughs> or it's Don Tio's. Or... Don Hector. Don a lot. Don, Don Alato. Alato. Sorry. He's also dead, though. He's been way dead for a long time. Yeah, but he's got to make it look like he's alive to reassemble the cartel. I think his corpse would be a, would be buried and or rotting by then. <laughs> yeah, that's what makes it funny. Yeah, I'm sure so Vince Gilligan will find. I'm sure Vince Gilligan will find a way to make it very uh, tasteful. <laughs> You never know with that guy. Yeah, never know. Anyway, uh, that's it for Trailer Blazers. Good night. Oh, no, there's still more podcasts. Oh, but, but I'm tired. But we have a podcast to do. I'm sleepy, oh, no. Swanson. <laughs> oh, what was that? Someone, someone seemed to suggest that you being tired is not a good thing. Yeah. It wasn't ideal for you to be tired, Stare. Mm, all right, I'll try to be more high energy. Yeah, you're going to need to because, uh, as you guys may know, the fall is coming, and that means I'm so television high- seasons. Goddamn right. <laughs> Brian Cranston! Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, and that means TV season's coming up, which means it's time for another round of Guess Who's Coming to the Fall TV lineup. I'm so hyped for Hit the I theme, don't... Keo. I'm going to stuff my ass with leaves. Uh, uh, bum, 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 bum. Wow. I didn't know there was going to be two theme songs. It's a little less impressive than the other one, but <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yes, welcome to Guess Who's Coming to the Fall TV lineup. As always, uh, you might have remembered this show from when we did the spring edition. Hmm. Uh, where I give you guys the names of upcoming television shows, and you try and guess what the premise is. All right. This week... We're going to be covering the fall TV shows for CBS. Yeah. As always, it's a a dire lot. (laughs) I'm scared. And you should be. Uh, First up, this show is called Bob Hart's Abyssola. Uh, Bob Hart's Abyssola. uh, Okay, what's the name? I don't know if I'm pronouncing... I don't know if I'm pronouncing... it. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. It's A B I S H O L A. What is that word? <laughs> Can we get a dictionary definition on that okay, word? Okay, okay. Is, is that is that an is that a word or a name? 
Oh, I feel like giving it away would. I feel oh, okay. like saying think... one thing or another would imply what the premise is. Okay, so Bob is in love with this Latina woman, but she's the dictator of a South American country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already gonna say way better show than whatever this is. Okay, Keo, your turn. Um, so Bob falls in love with a woman on the internet. Uh, okay. And expresses his love with a heart emoji. Oh, I thought you were gonna say she's a computer. <laughs> That's a twist. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. Turns out she's a computer. <laughs> wow, Keo. Wow, what an inter- what an interesting ad there. Uh, I was gonna say until you said, "Turns out she's a computer." Uh, you were both kind of close. Wow. After having a heart attack, a middle-aged sock businessman from oh. Detroit. Star. Unexpectedly falls for his cardiac nurse, a Nigerian uh, immigrant, and sets his sights on getting her to give him a chance. Mm. This sounds bad. Uh, well, I just want to it's point- on CBS. There's no way they're going to handle a Nigerian immigrant well. I just want to point out that Nigeria was not colonized by any of the Latin countries. So I apologize. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think i got to give this to Stairmaster, Keo. You added the computer thing. Yeah, what were you thinking? That was his... That was his fault. Stan did that. <laughs> well, that's not my, it's not my fault that you listened to I, him. I didn't mean it. I didn't I think know, that's what I, the show was about. I think that Kia should get it for the heart emoji part. Mm, I don't yeah, know. See, my I, really I, my decision's final. Oh, Stair, okay. <gasps> Stairmaster gets it. Yes. All right. This next one is called Carol's Second Act. Uh, was that kill as in murder? Carol's second act. <laughs> oh, okay. So Carol's like having a midlife crisis. So she decides to go on a vacation to rediscover herself and gets into some real crazy hijinks. Jesus, that's really good. Uh, Carol is is an actor, oh. and she oh. she has a second act. Uh, Stair took my idea basically, so. <laughs> Keo, I gotta be honest, you're not doing so hot. <laughs> Alright, Carol's second act. After raising her two children and retiring from teaching, Carol Chambers embarks on a unique second act. <laughs> she's she's going to become a doctor. A heart doctor? Just a doctor, I think. The promo image is just her in a, in a doctor's coat. Uh, uh, hmm. I was going to say it'd be funny if it was Chamberers, because it, <laughs> we watched that show called Chamber. Oh, yeah, where it was all about hearts. Uh, yeah. Except it wasn't about hearts at all. Um, I it's guess it sh- was. It's a show about nothing. Because the one lady died. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's canceled now, so we never have to worry about it again. Hmm. Anyway, this, star, this show uh, stars the wife from Everybody Loves Raymond. And uh, Coop from Twin Peaks. Do you know any so. of those people, Keo? No. Oh, <laughs> okay. I mean, yes, as mayor of television, of course. <laughs> mm. Oh. Mm. Anyway, I got to give this to Stairmaster. Again? He, oh. he, got, yeah! he got the closest, I think. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Next, one, next up, The Unicorn. Ooh. Uh, mm. Unicorn. So is, is it? Is it? It can't be about a unicorn. It can't there? Can't just be a unicorn there. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna say there is a unicorn there. <laughs> oh dang. Okay. <laughs> um, I think there's just gonna be like a very rare figure that appears. I'm, I'm not sure. Like, like, maybe it's like a really, really cool guy. He's like the best in town, and he's a unicorn because he's really. Isn't rare. there that term in Silicon Valley, unicorn companies or something? What does that mean? Fuck if I know. Is it like a one in a million company that's really rare yeah. and good? Mm. Well, I'm not going with that. I'm going with the the one I said. Yeah, that's good. Commit to your beliefs. All right. A widower is, in, is eager to move on from the most difficult year of his life, only to realize he's utterly unprepared to raise his two daughters on his own and equally unprepared for the dating world, where, to his shock, he's suddenly a hot commodity. <gasps> I guess he's the unicorn? DM me, daddy. 
Uh, I think I actually got that one exactly, Swanson. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> wow. Uh, Keo gets the point. Uh, Keo's making a comeback, I guess. Luckily, this is we have Keo's two second more, act. So. <laughs> it just might be. Uh, also starring in this show as the titular unicorn, Walton Goggins from The Shield. Wow. Presumably he's not. Presumably he did not murder his wife this time. <laughs> mm. All right. Who uh, knows? This, he's a, he's a widower, Swanson. Eh, true. All right. This one is called All Rise. Oh, you gotta be uh, fucking kidding me! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's a it's a courtroom drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's it's just fucking what all, I, all rise. What, what else could I, it fucking what be? I do? What I get, could I it guess, be? I, I can't. Okay. I, I can't. All right, stare. Sex and sex and race of the leading actor. Okay, so it's a black guy. It's a sassy black oh, judge okay. who's got a strong sense of justice and doesn't take any cup from his court people. So it's just Judge Joe Brown, but as a drama? Yes, yeah, so it's like a sexy judge, Mathis. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the exact I'm gonna go with the exact same thing Stair said. Okay. But I'm gonna say it's a woman. It's probably a woman. Oh my god. Holy shit, Keo Rain. <laughs> Not only what? not only is it a woman, it's Misty Knight from Luke oh, Cage. No. What? So I was right about the ethnicity. Yes. That's a draw. Uh, I don't think she's sassy, though. Oh. Anyway, all well, rise. Said, Let's... Wait, I didn't say sassy. I said sexy. Oh. You said sassy, I'm pretty I sure. I said sexy. You need to enunciate I better. We sexy. both heard sassy. Why would I say sassy in Judge Mathis and not sexy Judge Mathis? <laughs> Because sassy <laughs> makes sense for Judge Mathis. With network TV, the protagonist has to be sexy. Well, yes, yeah, and that's understandable then. You don't need to say it then. <laughs> no, no, no. But really, right. this judge is really sexy. <laughs> well, we know who won, who got the point already. But let's see what All Rise is about. Just in case it's somehow different. All Rise follows the dedicated, chaotic, hopeful and sometimes absurd lives of judges, prosecutors, and public defenders as they mm. work with bailiffs, clerks, and cops to get justice for the people of Los Angeles amidst a flawed legal system. <laughs> Sounds generic as hell. That doesn't sound sexy at all. Yeah. Sounds dry and sexless. Okay, maybe I did say sassy. I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> Wait, who got the point? You did. Yeah. Oh, holy that. crap. The guy who played Bullseye is in this, too. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Is he the bailiff? Uh, I don't know. I didn't watch, I'm not actually watching the trailer for this. I'm looking at the promotional material. <laughs> oh, we'll check back were, on, they... <laughs> with it next week. All right. People, uh, people at Marvel and Netflix were like, man, we got to get whatever we can. <laughs> Apparently. Um... There was a fire sale on all the actors. They got auctioned off. It turns out that might be more true than you think. And we'll find we, we'll find that out when we discuss this last show, uh, simply titled Evil. Oh what, fuck what, you! Come what on. a tiebreaker! What a tiebreaker! Oh, How can we possibly? No. <laughs> oh. Fucking CBS, man. Okay. What should we call this show? Uh, evil. Okay, so there's an ancient demon and it's awakening in the heart of New York oh. City. Oh my god, that's really good. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna I, keep, I, I want to gonna... point out it might be somewhere else on the northeast, but it's probably no, 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 no. It's got to be. I'm gonna keep. Okay, hold I'm on, gonna Keo, keep with Keo, your... Before you say huh? this, remember, this is CBS. <laughs> Do they not film in New York City? Well, they take. They always say it's New York, but it's usually in Vancouver. Yeah. Okay. All right. Is. Are you saying that there's no budget? There's not going to be a demon swan. I'm just saying. Remember CVS's, uh Just usual don't expect shows. it to be good. Oh, Swanson, you shouldn't be giving me hints. That's not fair to Stairmaster. <laughs> You're right. 
Forget I said. Right, strike so, it from the record. Mm, can okay, you make the so I'm going to strike it from the record, but still use the hint. Um, <laughs> so there's 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 got there's not going to be any demons because that's the CBS we're talking about. There's going to be a woman. A... <laughs> <laughs> they have to they have to fight her. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying about women in CBS? <laughs> I'm CBS isn't that woke. <laughs> it's a, a big it, woke. <laughs> It's a woman who uh, who I'll doesn't about, have. It's a woman who's unmarried and is over forty, so I'll they're already about, afraid of her. I'm thinking about last week's show. Sorry. Okay, there's gonna be a woman there, but I don't think she's the evil. I think she's gonna be like maybe the victim or the person hunting the evil, and the evil is gonna be like a criminal, like like the like the worst New York oh, <laughs> scumbag. Oh, so it's Jessica Jones. Yeah, it's Jessica Jones, but uh, CBS. So. Much worse. Well, Kia Ryan, uh, it's kind of Jim Jessica Jones in that fucking Mike <laughs> Coulter. Oh, Mike Coulter, Luke Cage is in this show. Oh, I thought you were gonna say what? Jessica Jones was in the show. No, come on, she doesn't no? have time for a CBS procedural. I don't know what's going on with her. Anyway, yes, Luke Cage is in this goddamn show. Oh, oh my god, they really did scoop them up. CBS was like, oh, we gotta get these boys, we gotta get them. <laughs> give, me, give me all of Marvel. <laughs> anyway, here's the uh, premise for Evil. Psychological mystery examines... This psychological mystery examines science versus religion and the origins of evil. It focuses... So there is a demon. Hmm? Hold on. It focuses on a skeptical female forensic psychologist mm-hmm. who joins a priest in training oh. and a car and a carpenter to I guess because like Jesus Whoa. to investigate and assess the church's backlog of supposed miracles, Whoa. demonic Whoa. possessions, Whoa. and unexplained <gasps> phenomena. Yes. Okay, I w- I didn't think much of it until I started reading this, but this sounds dope as hell. <laughs> I did it. I win. This actually sounds fucking cool. <laughs> I can't believe there's a demon. And, uh, I mean, we don't know for sure, but it's probably a demon. So, Stairmaster gets the point. He yeah! wins. Everybody dance now. Boom, 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 dun, 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 I can't believe you're going to dance it well, in my defeat. Yeah, um, well, Stairmaster, you've won the game. And as your prize, you get this life-size statue of Mike Coulter. Wow! I'm going to keep this in my bedroom and stare longingly at it. Yeah, just don't nights. let him inside you. <laughs> I'm gonna sit alone and feel sad oh, about my it's humiliating okay, defeat. You can sleep in my bedroom. Ooh, yeah, with Mike Coulter, the statue, <laughs> not the person. <laughs> all right, I think we're all winners here now. Anyway, uh, I can't believe we spent. The, I spent the last like s- section of that s- of that making fun of the show, and then it turned out to be fucking <laughs> rad as hell. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be let down. Yeah, we'll we'll probably find out. Anyway, that's wait, it for. Wait, hold on. Is my culture the priest or the? I don't know. I haven't watched the trailer. I'm guessing he's the carpenter. Mm. I I bet you it's going to be episodic with like a new oh, so it's really boring plot each time. <laughs> it's clearly like I, X Files. Like... They have the skeptical lady in there. Yes. <laughs> and and then one third of the episodes is going to have like a lady who's like, my boy, something's wrong with my boy. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with trying to figure out who the priest is is the four main characters are listed on this pro or shown in this promo slide, but none of them are wearing a priest collar. Oh no! I guess because it's a priest in training, so maybe it is Michael. That'd be one hunky ass priest. <laughs> like speaking a, of yeah, speaking that, of sexy and not sassy, mm, not that's like, gonna cause a lot of sinning. I think <laughs> not very Judge Mathis at all. <laughs> Anyway, that's uh, that's it for this week's edition of Guess Who's Coming to the Fall mm. TV lineup. Can we watch uh, Judge Mathis for the show? Uh, ask me when it's a really slow week. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's it for uh, that. So it's time for our main event. Oh, we watched did we? the third season of Netflix's baffling 13 Reasons Why. And we're here to talk about it. Why? Yeah, there's there's not thirteen reasons why we watch this show. Wow. <laughs> no, there's there's really only one, which is that we watch the trailer and we're baffled by it. So now we're watching this. Well, it's anyway, my fault. 
I don't know about either of you two, but I watched the recap that Netflix gives you for the uh, <laughs> thing because uh, I had watched like maybe the first two episodes of this show way way back when it first premiered, and I was like, "That's good." I oh, I didn't get the recap. I only had the PSA. It's the recap is uh, <clears throat> wild. Kieran, did you get the recap at all? <clears throat> I didn't get the recap. Oh, what? It's All like right. it's like the uh, Narcos one. Yes, uh, in that like a bunch of stuff happens and you're completely confused by it and like baffled. Bryce Walker built himself his own prison. No, it's not well, that. It's just it's something? just a previously on, but it's like fucking an entire season. Oh. So anyway, uh, this recap is pretty wild. So the guy who dies in this uh, introduction episode. We don't see him die, obviously, because that's the mystery. Um, but he is, uh, you know, a rapist and a murderer. Uh, and he is put on trial for the murder of, or for the rape of a couple of different ladies and gets away with it because he's mm. white and a football player. Um, fine. So far, okay, I get what you're, you're pulling from the real world to tell a subject. Uh, then, at the end, there's a random school shooting. So <laughs> what? I... That's how that kid gets the gun. What? How many? Did he shoot people? I, no. I, that The kid that they're talking to who like clearly has mental issues yeah. went to the school because he's been bullied relentlessly uh, to shoot up their school dance. And this kid, the protagonist, Clay or whatever, stops him. What? Oh, no. And then he covers it up. <laughs> what? Uh... What message are you sending here? <laughs> Oh my god, that's what you were talking... Oh, that's what you were screaming about. Yeah, why... Why would you do that? I don't understand. Amazing. Um, like, okay, yeah, I get it. You want to talk about, you know, these deep and personal uh, <laughs> issues or whatever. It's like, don't fucking do this! Yeah, yeah, that's not a good... That's not a good role model. Anyway, uh, we do... Yeah, you yeah, can't re- fix that on Twitter with your mutuals, fam. Also, there's a still there's a shot. There's no context to the shot, so I don't know why it happened. But there's a shot of someone burning uh, on someone's lawn, rapist. So that's cool. <laughs> that slaps. We should do that more often. Yeah, probably that slaps. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we get onto the actual episode. Uh, I don't think yeah, there's a whole lot to PSA. talk about. <laughs> But we get a PSA at the beginning, which uh, well, I've gotten the confirmation. Uh, I've gotten confirmation from mm-hmm. someone that uh, this was not because I didn't think it was. But this is a thing that they added at the second season. The PSA, the PSA was not something they played <laughs> during the first season of the show, mm-hmm. the one that featured the suicide, um, <laughs> the lengthy suicide scene. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So we get these uh, the, the main cast of the show giving us the general like hey. we talk about some we, we talk about some tough issues and if you're going through this stuff you might not want to watch this because we don't actually treat it with respect <laughs> and visit our website. Yeah, um, it did make me feel like I was watching an ABC Family drama. I don't know if you guys ever checked out an ABC Family drama before, but they do feel a not lot like depth. this show. And then we get onto oh, our program, people. and we have this lady like scrubbing out blood in an Eastern European bathroom somewhere. Yeah. Oh, you say this uh, is like an ABC thing. Does that mean when you watch an ABC drama, it's like people are half robot walking around saying, "I'm very emotional today." <laughs> uh, an ABC Family one, yes. Also, let's Keo, talk about, uh, let's let's talk about our feelings with direct words. Keo, uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but the intro uh, types out the. Puts the word, the letter, the number thirteen in between two of the letters of the show's title. Uh, how would you pronounce how they do this, Kieran? Uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it's third thirteen. The one or third thirteen the in reasons why. It's like through one thirteen. Re- th- reasons why. <laughs> it's not like you're speaking backwards for a second. <laughs> anyway, they put the they put one the one from uh, the number one in place of the I and thirteen. Yeah, and popular the number, number three. one. <laughs> it's the loneliest one I've heard. <laughs> uh, and three, uh, the number of hosts on this podcast in for the <laughs> E and reasons, and yeah. it's baffling. 
I just think it's, it's dumb. stylized and very cool. Yeah. I just think it's really stupid. Um, very dramatic, setting the tone for this very serious <laughs> show. So we get introduced to this girl who is uh, the new Scrubbing girl blood, in school. And yeah, she's in and this, like, building from Hostel. Okay, that's what it looks like, and yeah, then she but goes then she into goes a nice-ass house. <laughs> Her kitchen. This kitchen is immaculate. Yeah. How the fuck? It like, looks like Gustavo Fring's kitchen. Yeah, it, it look it, it like how does she? How, her mom is like a home a home care worker. It looks like, and apparently her dad is not around. I don't know. We don't get any clues on what her dad is up to because. But her bathroom assume, looks like the torture scene place from Taken. Yeah, like, and then they she cuts. She steps into an immaculate steel. house, like full of stainless steel, big as all get out. <laughs> There's no way they can afford this house, right? This was the most... In- well, I don't know why they didn't fix the bathroom. <laughs> Maybe that's why they were able to afford the house. <laughs> on the on whatever you make as a home care Is this worker. the most interesting part of the episode, this house? This I, I mean, I was baffled by it, but... Anyway, the uh... The synthesis of opposing elements... This new student is supposed to be sort of like a way of getting us back into the flow of the show, which doesn't work because the show jumps around in time constantly. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It's more confusing than last week's episode, which went across 90 years or something. Yeah, and this <laughs> all this show is doing is jumping across eight months. Also, she describes herself as the new girl, even though she's been there for eight months. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. <laughs> Anyway, what's baffling to me about uh, when you watch the re- the episode in full is uh, the part that, like, works the most, quote-unquote, is the, like, last 20 or so minutes when we just <laughs> sort of get introduced to this new girl. Instead, what happens in the first, like, half hour of this show is just a bunch of stuff that just gets thrown at us, and then we get the scenes where she's meeting all the people. I don't know what's people. going on! Like Where's why didn't you? Boy? Where's the boy? Where's the boy? Where's my boy? We, we, we gotta walk around. Why does he have an boy. M4? Is he gonna fight the T one thousand? I love that. Like this kid Clay gets arrested, <laughs> and then uh, a bu- all of the other scenes after he gets arrested are them being like, "They took the boy. The boy's gone. Where's the boy? Mm, this is <laughs> this is this is Alpha One. They've taken the boy. <laughs> what are we gonna do about the boy? Um, I'm, and I'm sorry, they, mom. Don't... They've taken the boy. And we'll talk this about becomes, the like, a murder mystery, I guess, which, like, oh, wasn't this a like show a, about suicide? They got a true detective framing device. Yeah, we're, like, I guess, yeah, only it's not talking about, like, the duality of, like, or, like, the the, mm. the randomness of someone's memories. Instead, it's just yeah, there's purely no there to confuse you. And there's no Lovecraft illusions. Yeah. Anyway, um, we do get, uh... We keep cutting back and forth to this, like, fateful conclusion of the second season, I guess, which is uh, Clay takes the gun from the kid, the uh, Tyler, I think is the kid's name, who was the, clearly has mental health problems and no one tells him to seek help ever. <laughs> well, they're in Nevada. Uh, another in a long line of the poor messaging on this show. <laughs> well, like, well, the show told you to call a hotline at the beginning. Yeah, instead of just having That's someone it. in the show be like, you need help. <laughs> I guess part of it is that they don't want him to get in trouble for bringing a gun to school, but maybe he should. <laughs> also, it's not like he brought a gun to school. He brought an AK-47 and was <laughs> planning to shoot up an entire... Actually, it's once and it was an AR-15. Oh, all right. <laughs> Which Is that yeah, easier uh, or harder to get? Uh, easier. Easier. Well, actually, yeah. you can get both, basically. But I think that you can get, like, 3D-printed AR-15s that are untraceable by the government. And as we see in the, like, printed little, guns. As we see in the little flashback, or in, like, the scene where he's, like, uh, he's gotten taken by, like, that guy, this guy who... I don't know this dude, this Tony guy who's, Tony. like, friends with... He's friends with everybody, but, like, he's, like, trying to get him to calm down or whatever. You you see Tyler, and he's dressed like the fucking Punisher. <laughs> he's got, like, body armor on, and he's got, like, a, well, I mean, a backpack who knows what's full of it. I mean, that's what all mass shooters dress like now, so... Yeah. Back in my day, they used to dress like Neo. True. 
Um, Wait, they wore trench coats yes. and sunglasses? Did you look yeah, at the, anything? The, the Columbines. Keo was too young to remember that. Keo's the same yeah, age I, as us. Yeah. I wasn't I wasn't at Columbine during the shooting. Oh, we were there. That's probably why we remember. <laughs> we were the first responders. Yeah. We were also the first responders uh, for 9-11. Weird. <laughs> hmm. Coincidence, right? Uh, yeah. Totally. Um... No, nothing weird about that. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah, this show constantly jumps between times. Like, I To the point where halfway through, I wasn't sure what was taking place eight months before or eight months after. Like, I couldn't tell what scenes were after this kid had been murdered and after he had like was still alive. Well, that's because we're in hell. There is no time here. That makes sense. Anyway. Um, they, did not, they did not convey the... The flow of time at all. Like, have seasons! Yeah. Have one in autumn and have one, like, in winter. Easiest way, yes. Easiest way. It's the, the problem is that they're in California. So yeah, and also eight months. It's kind of difficult to go from winter to something else. Yeah. In a school year. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this new girl sort of fun, uh, meets... She does one of my least favorite things when you're introducing a new character, which is... Oh, she somehow meets and befriends all of the primary cast. Also, she's British. You hate to see it. Yeah, you hate to see a British character show up on a show with no British characters. <laughs> Which is weird because... Was it a... Yeah, her mom does not have a, a coinc- British accent. She does. Was it a coincidence or was she, like, hired to, like, scope them out? That's that's the impression I what? got. What, she's in my she six? She on <laughs> She's like, we heard about this kid, Bryce Walker. He's a rapist. We're here to get him. <laughs> like, w- like, wasn't there a whole Mom, monologue about like that how Bryce like Walker's behind the bombings? <laughs> how like she, she knows everybody now, and and she's like, she's like in and everything. Or yeah, but they never reveal who she's talking to, which I guess is part of another mystery. It's her handler. Show. It's a guy from Bodyguard. Yeah, pro- it's it's Michael Madden. <laughs> Wait, is that isn't Richard Madden? Richard Madden. John Madden. It's John Matt. Well, you see here, what you need to do is you need to go over to this zone. You see, Mom, if they score more points, they win the game. God, who does a John Madden impression in 2019? <laughs> you do. That guy's He's been retired dead. for like five, for like 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so we get Clay uh, with the cop. First mistake, by the way. <laughs> yeah. He asked the cop if he needed a lawyer. You hate to see it. <laughs> Rookie mistake. You never ask a cop. <laughs> yeah, we need to start teaching need, that in do, elementary school. Do I need a lawyer? No, this is not a criminal investigation <laughs> at all. No, you're yeah, fine. You're, you're just fine. in a, you're an interrogation room. You don't need a lawyer. Mm. Remember, kids, lawyer up. Uh, maybe it's just because we've watched enough Better Call Saul. You know? never talk to the cops when we're... Yeah, just never talk to them. Even if they're your father. Even if they take you to a secret black site and torture you for several hours. For yeah. all my Chicago fr- fans out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, did that happen to you, Snare Master? Yes. Oh, must have been tough. <laughs> yeah, did you cry? Yeah, a little bit. Did you laugh? No, they made me give up the TV <sighs> tuner's recording schedule. <gasps> Uh, so Wait. Th- they want to know when we're recording? Yeah. And where. Well, what are they planning? I don't know. They want to also know when the guard shifts change. Oh, no. <laughs> That's in five minutes. we oh. got to hurry. <laughs> I'll keep to watch on the time. Anyway, yeah. Um, basically, through the, the general gist of this show is that someone has killed, or this episode, is that someone has killed Bryce Walker and everybody's a suspect. But mostly the Even me? <gasps> so wait, yeah, who, was, think, who was the guy who was going to shoot up the school? Bryce Walker or Clay Davis? That's uh, that's Tyler. Oh, Tyler. Bryce Walker is the jock kid. Oh. His mom. Uh, he's talking with his mom at one point. Like I previously boy. mentioned, I have trouble telling white people apart. And TV and yeah, film. white people. White people are pretty similar, <laughs> yeah. especially in this show where Tyler and Clay look a lot alike. <laughs> yeah, 
They need to give him, like, colored hats or something. Or just longer hair for one of them. They have the same exact haircut. See, you don't have to worry about this in anime. Everyone has the same faces, but they have different hair colors. Yeah, that really would, it would have been great if, like, Tyler had, like, purple hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and a I buster mean, sword. That, yes. I mean, that's... That's a, that's a little unbelievable, guys. Just give just give Tyler like a blue hat. Yes. And but they're not gonna let you wear yeah. a hat in school unless you have like cancer. Maybe he mm. does. Mm. That could be All a right, twist. Well, give, him, give him like some like some goggles then or something. <laughs> they're definitely not gonna let you wear goggles. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> what kind of dress code doesn't let you wear goggles? I don't know. Uh, yeah, what if, you need to, what, if you, what if you're going to swim? <laughs> He's on the swim team. Oh. Yeah. That boy's on the swim team. He Those goggles are recreational. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, they're occupational. But it's, not, it's not his job. He doesn't get paid. <laughs> no, for some reason, I, I'm, I'm picturing like some kind of strange weed contraption that puts the <laughs> smoke in your goggles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pour it in straight through my eyes. Kiyo, can, Kiyo, can you hit us? Can you hit us with that one more time? <laughs> yeah, you know, play the song. Play the- Smoke weed every day. Thank you. Nice. Good. Oh no, 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 no! What the goggles do is they're eye drop dispensers, but that's like since you're looking for it, they have to be pressurized. Nice. Yeah. So they- uh, anyway, yeah. At a certain point, uh, everything starts to like blend together. Um. And really, none of it matters because the point, the the the, the, tit, the the titular flaw of this show is that it has it wants to tackle these serious subject matters and can't. But it be wants to be a to soap opera it. too. Yeah, it can't be bothered to do it in a way that's at all worthy of them. Like you can't. Yeah, when somebody when somebody's not well, you just tell them you know breathe. Yeah, and that helps, right? Yeah. When someone is clearly uh, going through some sort of PTSD from past <laughs> bullying experiences. I mean, breathing is important, but also sending them to therapy. Yeah, uh, breathing breathing exercises are, are like step one. <laughs> yeah, but not step omega. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, th- and that's my, ultimately my issue with this show is that, like, so... You want to tackle something like uh, a rapist getting away with what they did because of the, them being popular in the school. Okay, how about don't have them get murdered then? <laughs> or do have them get and murdered I'll... but don't have a school shooting plotline where you're defending the school shooter. Well, my thing is, if you oh, have so them like... get murdered, then you're immediately sending the wrong message. Especially if it's someone from the main cast who <laughs> murdered him. Also, there's like a plotline about a riot that we barely went on. Yeah, it's not in. The, I was confused by this too because it's not in the recap, so I don't know if this actually happened already in the show. How is it or if not it's in a the thing recap? that's going to happen? I don't think it's right. happened yet. That's like something you would want. I don't to think show it's people. happened yet, is what I'm saying. What? But it's eight months in the future. Yeah, but they're jumping in between. Remember? Uh... So I think it's something that happened eight months later, but we haven't seen it yet. Uh... Also, Swanson, should we hide our? Drug canisters from the police. Yeah, and your or... weed goggles that I we just bought right now. Gog- we should definitely hide the weed goggles. Yeah, I guess paraphernalia is illegal too, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Is just there... uh, throw it, just throw it all away quick. Is there anything else you wanna we have to say about this stupid show? Uh, I really appreciated how we had five separate scenes of these boys standing around being like, "We can't talk about <laughs> what happened." Yeah, yeah, we love organized teen crime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a sh- in our show that's tackling real serious issues. Like again, that's the thing. If you're going to tackle an issue, don't have them, I don't know, cover up a school shooting or try and get away with murder. <laughs> These are not things that actual teens do, I don't think. Well, I think they do all the time. You think they cover up school shootings and get away with well, murder? The murder part. I don't think yeah, the school shooting like yeah a guy shows up to the school with a with an automatic weapon. You guys need and... to see this oh, no, recap our because he is literally walking to the he is <laughs> literally walking to yeah. the door of the school and like the Terminator the Brad what's his name 
Yeah, it's like when uh, it's, it's like when like, Arnold doom, pulls out doom, the flowers, doom. the box of flowers. Only it's just an actual gun, and it's yeah. just it's no flower. There are no flowers that are containing <laughs> right. it. Yeah, they're like, oh, our friend. We gotta take care of our friend. He's in, he's not feeling so good, so he's gotta <laughs> murder all of us. Like, talk to the school yeah. counselor about this, or anybody, anybody who's professionally trained in this. Get the help. <laughs> talk to your pastor. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Talk to Try Luke it. Cage. Talk to sexy oh, yeah. demon hunting Luke Cage. How great would it have been if he had he was going to shoot up the school and then Luke Cage showed up and said, "Why don't you shoot me?" <laughs> yeah, he just walks in front of the bullets. He's like, "Try and shoot me, kid." Wow, 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 wow. R.I.P.D. Wow, to a wow. true legend, Luke Cage. <laughs> He he just unloads on him doesn't and doesn't phase him and then it's just that's the end of the show. Yeah. He grabs a barrel and twists it. <laughs> yeah, he would do that too. We've seen it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, do you guys have any final no. thoughts on this show? There's like a secret flash drive and like some Chernobyl tapes. Oh yeah, and at the very end, Clay has some incriminating text messages that I'm sure are going to play out <laughs> throughout gonna, the season. This guy's like, I'm going to fucking murder you. And he's like, hey, buddy, want to talk sometime? He's like, no, you're fucking dead to me. Fucking die. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to murder he's you like, in this exact fashion at this location. Yeah, this kid's a dummy. <laughs> he can't lawyer up, and he makes incriminating text messages. Mm. Anyways, yeah, this is a tune out. This is not the show of the month. Yeah, Stairmaster would never harass anybody like that. <laughs> Especially not on Twitter. What is the show of the month? Uh, I think it's the boys. I believe uh, August is still going on. Actually, when this drops, it'll be in September, so this is not the show of the month. Yeah. The show of the month is TVD. <laughs> but the show of last month was The Boys. Yeah, probably. I still need to watch that. Anyway, this I'll show have, is mm, not... I think the police are here. I'm gonna Uh-oh. leave. Alright, see you later, guys. Find me on oh. Twitter at Stormancer. Bye. Stairs jumping out the door. <laughs> Whoa! Oh wow! Well, Keo, well, I guess it should be fine. I guess it's time to strap up. Oh, wait, we we gonna? That doesn't sound good. I think we're gonna die if we do that. You, you don't want to fight them? No, I mean I already hit all the drugs. Oh, then why are we still here? Let's get out of here. Let's plug. Let's plug quick, quick, quick. All right, yeah, let's, yeah. If you have any quips, comments. Oh, sorry, hold on. That's a tune out for thirteen reasons why. <laughs> uh, if you have any quips, comments. Uh, or any other suggestions that you want to give us, you can email us at tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. What's that email, Keo Ryan? Uh, tvtunerspodcast at gmail.com. Whoa. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm a little startled. I see a cop out there in riot gear. He's got staring a chokehold. See, out the window, look. Oh, wow. <clears throat> wow, yeah. Uh, that does sound like Stairmaster getting choked. Um... Anyway, yeah, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jesse Swanson. And uh, you can follow the show at TV Tuners. You can also use the hashtag TV Tuners. And we'll give a glance at what you're saying. I'll take a look at that. Oh my god, he's hitting them with the baton. Wow. Stairs really getting pummeled out there. Glad we're in here, safe and sound. Yeah. And I have the getaway getaway car in the back. Oh man, are you going to do some drifting and like... You know I'm going to drift past, like, two cars that are perfectly placed away from each other that a car could fit through it. Oh my god, that's going to be so awesome. Swanson, let's get out of here. All right. Uh, And remember, as always, uh, if you want to subscribe to us, we're on all the podcatchers of your choice. Google, Stitcher Play, Sleebeat.com, Stitcher, Spotify. You know, all the podcatchers that you love and uh, want in your life. Do we have nitro on the car? Oh yeah, you know I hooked it up. Oh man. <gasps> yes. And as always, we're part of the Big Head Media Network. Tons of great podcasts on that network. One you might hear right after this. Uh, check those out if you want. And we'll be back next week for more TV goodness. Until then, keep watching. Bye. It's over. I found him.
All right, everybody on the train, all aboard. You snooze, you lose. Buy my loot boxes. Not you. Get off the train. Don't let him on. Oh, okay. All right, listen here, Greenhorn. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about how to conduct a podcast. First thing you need to know is never stay on topic ever. Uh, sir. What do you want? Uh, people are complaining about the Venom movie still. I don't care. Feed them Justice League or something. Get them off my back. Copy. But, sir, it says in the book that you need to stay on topic as a podcast. Screw the book, Greenhorn. The book was written by dinosaurs. Second thing you need to know is never report news that's not at least two or three weeks old. Uh, sir. What do you want? People are complaining about the Pokemon Go update. I don't care. Just... Gag them! Or something! Shut them up! On it. Uh, sir? What do you want, Greenhorn? I think the train might be going off the rails. That's exactly how we run this show. This is the Crazy Train of Thought podcast, brought to you by the Idiot Savants. Find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. www.crazytrainofthought.com